Welcome to the last page of the Income and Expense Declaration. On yours, you're going to fill out the party information here and the actual case number. That way, if the pages get separated, they can at least be put back in the correct file. Misfiled pages are as good as non-existent pages. For the sake of brevity, though, I'm going to move on. So, Section 16, Number of Children, I have, and in this case, Sam Smith and Jessica Keeney have one child under the age of 18, and the child spends half the time with mom and half the time with dad. You're going to want to put what actually applies in your case, and if you don't know exactly what the percentage is, you can put the actual parenting schedule that's being followed here and then the Department of Child Support Services or the court can calculate the amount of parenting time each parent has. Now, we're not putting what's court ordered here. We're putting what's actually happening. It's not uncommon for a court order to say something like 50-50 custody, but one parent to only see the child on the weekends for work schedules or, you know, whatever the reason may be. It's not uncommon for the actual parenting schedule to be different than the court order. So you're going to put what's actually happening. I know I said that a few times, so I can't stress that enough. But in Sam and Jessica's case, 50-50 is what's actually happening. And then the next section is children's health care expenses. I do or I do not have health insurance available for the children through my job. Well, in Sam's case, he's self-employed and he has health insurance. He's providing it for himself. I would say he technically does have insurance available. And let's say that it's uh, Blue Cross. And then a lot of times people don't know the address of the insurance company. You can look it up. If you don't know the address, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, it's nice to put it there so that if the other parent needs to get information, they can. You technically need to put it there because the form asks for it, but it's not uncommon not to have the information. The monthly cost of the children's health insurance is or would be. Do not include the amount your employer pays. So this is how much extra is it going to cost to add the kids to the health insurance? Well, Sam is paying $300 a month right now for health insurance. And let's say that it's going to cost an extra $1,000 to add one child. You might have to contact HR or your insurance company. If you're self-employed, you probably don't have HR. So you might have to contact your insurance company and find out how much it would be to add the child. Again, be honest. Being dishonest hurts your credibility. And it makes it so that in the future, if the court has to rely on what you're telling the court, instead of supporting documents, the court may not believe you because you've been dishonest in the past. So be honest. But also be aware that if you're breaking the law, you may have a Fifth Amendment right to, be, to remain silent and you may need to talk to an attorney about how to fill out the form. It's pretty rare that I run into a situation where a person is breaking the law. I mean, technically, Sam's not following the law because he hasn't filed his taxes since 2017, and he should be working on filing his 2019. If Sam were a tax cheat, uh, he may be turned into the IRS. But in this case, Sam's just a bad bookkeeper. He's had a rough time. He's a little bit behind. Um, so ta tax cheating is when I do see people breaking the law and uncomfortable with filling out their income and expense declaration. It, it's because of tax cheating. Don't cheat on your taxes. You'll get caught. Okay, so the next section is additional expenses for children in this case. So if Sam had children from another relationship, if you have children from another relationship, this is not the section that you're putting that information in. This is only for the children of this case. So for Sam and Jessica, this only relates to Terry. Additional expenses, so the children in this 
for the children in this case, and they want to know the amount per month. Child care so I can get job training or go to work. <clears throat> well, we know that daycare runs about $900 a month for Terry. So there might be more than daycare, though. There might be a babysitter as well. This doesn't include child care costs to go out on a date doesn't include child care costs to go shopping, like grocery shopping without your kids. It doesn't include child care costs to go to the gym, unless your job happens to be a personal trainer or a dance instructor or something that requires you to go to the gym. This is just so you can get job training. So <clears throat> frequent uh, child care costs for job training that aren't daycare that I see are for people who have to work after normal business hours, so daycare is closed. So let's say part of Jessica's job is to go to local board meetings so that she can advise the board. She would have additional income or additional child care here above and beyond the 900. We said before that it was 450. Um, Let's see, Sam may have additional child care so that he can go to continuing education. The reason why I mentioned what I did about Jessica is because in Jessica's income and expense declaration, we said that she works for some city. But Sam here is self-employed. <clears throat> and, and you may have a situation where you have to go away occasionally for training or for work and you have to pay a neighbor to watch your kids so you may have additional just you know think about those things when you're filling this out and remember that it's work related children's health care not covered by insurance so again this is prescriptions co-pays uh, doctor's visits that aren't covered by insurance medical procedures that aren't covered by insurance deductibles ambulance rides hopefully you don't have a whole lot of ambulance rides but in the case of Terry he was sick about a year ago. He has an ambulance bill that Jessica and Sam are still trying to pay off. But we're going to say that on average, Terry's health expense, healthcare expenses not covered by insurance come to $10. Travel expenses for visitation. So this can be handled a number of different ways. This can be your actual travel expenses. So be prepared to provide receipts if that's what you're doing. Some courts are going to want to know how many miles per gallon does your vehicle get? How far are you traveling to exchange the child or children? And what is gas costing you? And they'll calculate it that way. Other courts may be inclined to give you reimbursement at the IRS rate for business travel. I like to go with actual travel expenses or the estimated expenses based on how far the parties have to drive and what the cost of gas is and how many miles per gallon their vehicle gets. So let's say that Sam spends about $20 a month to travel for visitation. Uh, sometimes I see airfare included in there because I, I do see international cases and I also see cases where parties live several states apart or one's in Northern California, one's in Southern California, so there's airfare. So keep that in mind too. If you're going to claim airfare, you should be keeping those receipts for sure and producing them. Children's educational or other special needs? Well, none for Terry, but... You know, tutors would go here, private school tuition I would put here, and then I would explain what that is. Special hardships. I ask the court to consider the small, uh, blah, 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 tongue tied again, the following special financial circumstances, and then it tells you to attach documentation. Extraordinary health expenses not included in 18B. So this, again, would be the ambulance expense that I discussed above for Terry. And let's say that it's $1,000 a month for the next 12 months. So in a future video, we're going to have the interesting situation where both Jessica and Sam have claimed this. And I would want to know, are they both paying $1,000 a month? Is this an expense that they know they need to start paying and they're each paying half? How is this really being handled? 
those are also things I want you to think about. And if this is an expense you haven't started paying yet, but that's what the payments are going to be and you and the other party are going to split them, make a note of that. You can make a note down here. But I'm going to move on and, and I'm going to deal with how this is going to be looked at by a child support attorney in a later video. Major losses not covered by insurance, so theft, fire, other insured losses. Seems funny to have an insured loss that's not covered by insurance, but it happens. In this situation, we're going to say not applicable. Expenses for my minor children who are from other relationships and living with me. So this is important. In this case, Sam has none. But if you have children from other relationships living with you, list their names. You're going to list their approximate expenses. And then if you receive child support for those children, you're going to list that there. And as an attorney, I want to know, does the parent of those children live with you? Because that's going to affect the information that we plug into the child support calculation later on down the road. It's not applicable in this case, but it may be applicable in your case. So fill this out accurately for you. Expenses listed in A, B, and C create an extreme financial hardship because, and you're going to want to explain why this creates an extreme financial hardship for you. Maybe it doesn't really create an extreme financial hardship, but you want the court to give you a hardship deduction for it. You want the court to consider it, and you want to make sure that the court has all the information they need, and so does DCSS, and so does the other party. Okay, down here, if there's any other information you want the, know, the court to know considering support in your case, you're going to list it right here. And this can be just about anything. So... In a situation like Sam's where he hasn't paid taxes or he hasn't filed taxes since 2017, I want to know, has he been paying his taxes? And so I would want to make a note of that. You know, although I haven't filed my taxes since 2017, I have been paying X amount a quarter in my taxes, or maybe Sam hasn't paid his taxes, and he knows he's going to have quite a large tax bill. Sam's going to want to put that information here, although I haven't filed my taxes since 2017, and I haven't paid taxes since 2017. I am working with my CPA to remedy that situation. I anticipate having a very large tax bill, and I will be paying those taxes. You could have almost any number of things, but tax problems with self-employed people is pretty common for me to see. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because when I'm an attorney for the other parent who should be receiving support in this case, and I know the other party is not paying income taxes, and I know the other party is not filing their taxes, I'm going to argue that support should be calculated as though their income is tax-free because they've not been paying taxes. But the court is going to want to know, well, have you just had a tough time and you're going to pay your taxes and you're solving that situation? And so in order for you to pay your tax debt, we need to calculate support based on you actually having taxable income. So that, that's important. That might be a little bit over a lot of people's heads, but it's something to think about. Other information concerning support that I frequently see people list here is that, you know, there's been a short-term change in, in the custody situation. So maybe one parent now has 80% of the custody, but that's going to change and it's just short term, we'd want to put that in here. Maybe you know that uh, one of your major clients is going to, going to go find your services elsewhere, so you're going to lose them, and that's going to change your income. You'd want to put that there. 
if you know that you're going to get a big contract in the near future, it's in the works, you're just waiting for it to be signed, or it's already been signed, and you don't have to start performing on the contract, and you're not going to be paid for the contract until a point in the future, you're going to want to put that here. So I do see this with attorneys, and I do see this with contractors, um, you know, like building contractors pretty frequently. So something to keep in mind, is there other information you want the court to know? Put that here. And you might need to attach an additional page. If you do, write see attached page and continue it on the next page. So again, this was for informational, educational purposes only. This is not legal advice. I cannot per guarantee a particular outcome in your case. I'm not responsible for a particular outcome in your case. My client, Lassen County Department of Child Support Services, and my other counties are not responsible for the outcome in your case. This is here to try to help you out. It can be difficult in these smaller areas to have access to uh, the family law facilitator. And right now, we are all in quarantine except for essential, you know, seeking essential services. So a lot of facilitators are going to help by phone only, and that can make it difficult to get some help. So hopefully this helps you out. There will be links in the description so that you have access to this form and so that you have access to my favorite date time calculator. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do what I can to go review the comments periodically so that I can answer those questions. My answers are not going to be legal advice. It's simply going to be for educational purposes telling people how I see those situations handled. Thank you again.